Hello everyone. A um, bit of context about where this fits into ANS, uh, right in the middle, reliable services. Um, so at least we hope they're reliable, and pretty much they are. Um, so the vocabulary widget is part of our offerings associated with um, Research Vocabularies Australia. So let's get right into it. Uh, here's an outline of the talk I'm going to describe what problem this solves and what motivates the work that we've been doing on the vocabulary widget, a little bit of the history, uh, very brief overview of the current offerings and then go into some more details and then an invitation to you to um, go ahead and use it. So broad context here is somewhat more general than uh, what you've just been hearing about. This is the very broad context of consuming a vocabulary and my colleague Joel Ben tells me I need more pictures so here's a good you of his picture of vocabulary consumption, um, which I hope you will enjoy later. Uh, let's move on because text is actually better. Um, broad context consuming a vocabulary, more specifically uh, concept selection. Uh, so the incorporation of a manual, that is a human being uh, selecting a concept, uh, being able to do that within a service. Uh, applications, I'm sure you can think of uh, data classification, uh, Validation, data validation, um, use in search fields, etc., etc., etc. Very specifically, we want to make it easy for uh, web developers to get started with concept selection, incorporate it in their own services web forms. Um, and um, it's a, it's a, it, it is very much a get started, um, but there's a lot of flexibility for you to um, go further. So I'll show how that works a bit later on. Bit of history. Uh, the widget is something that we built some years ago to serve our own needs and it's something that we then uh, opened up and made a bit more generally available. Uh, in particular, it services uh, Research Data Australia and not the portal but the back end of it which we call our registry, it's a metadata registry and in particular manual entry of metadata. Oops, going backwards. Um, and that manual entry of metadata is drawn from two, two main vocabularies, but three, um, four. Uh, the main one is our own uh, metadata uh, schema, which is an XML schema, RIVCS, but that has some controlled vocab vocabularies associated with it. So a number of the metadata elements um, have their values drawn from uh, controlled vocabularies. That's an example of that. Um, but also we use that are famous uh, fields of research vocabulary as well, and that's um, uh, used extensively for subject entry. Um, records, when you enter a record into Research Data Australia, we ask you to provide some subject keywords, and they're drawn from, well, we encourage FOR, but you can also provide the SEO uh, keywords and GCMD, etc. Uh, we then subsequently released a controlled vocabulary widget, the code, which you could then use against three vocabularies, the, the RIFCS vocabulary and the FOR and SEO vocabularies. Um, but what we've done is subsequently release uh, Research Vocabularies Australia, uh, and uh, our partners have been madly publishing vocabularies in RVA, and the widget is there, and you can use it against any of the uh, published vocabularies that are what we call widgetable, of which there are almost 100 uh, as of now. Let me show you some screenshots very quickly of um, our own internal use of the widget. So this is, yeah, if you've used the metadata entry screens, this should be familiar to you. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, but they're just, just some examples of how we use it ourselves. Um, uh, when you're defining a manu uh, manually entering a collection in, in RDA, there's a drop down here you see um, to select uh, the type of collection, data, data set, software publication, etc., and that drop down is published from one of the part of the controlled vocabularies for RIFCS. Similarly, the subject type, um, when you're entering subjects, you can enter subjects from a number of different sources, and that list of sources is also um, in the vocabulary. Uh, and here's an example of actually entering a subject. This also is driven by the vocabulary widget. This is um, the FOR. Uh, vocabulary and this is shown in tree mode and as you would expect the little plus signs to the left of the um, keywords open up 
the next level down and there's three levels of vocabulary there. So if you're entering a field of research for a keyword, you'll, you'll use the, the widget in tree mode at that point. Um, if, you're, if you're entering, if instead of in, uh, selecting FOR, you'd select GCMD, you'll have to type it in uh, at least a few, a few letters and this is now the widget in search mode uh, and then you get a drop, um, a drop down with some suggestions based on, um, well, not suggestions, matches um, that, uh, against what you've typed in. And then you click on the one that you want and it inserts it into the, into the field for you. So that's how we consume uh, vocabularies ourselves in our DA using the vocabulary widget. I want to just introduce uh, what we are offering more broadly through Research Vocabularies Australia. Uh, and if you haven't seen it already, I hope you will check it out, have a look. Uh, there are over 100, well over 100 vocabularies published through RBA, uh, of which almost 100 are uh, in this widgetable category. Uh, and also, if you, if you don't, if you think you might be interested in publishing through RBA, but you're not quite ready to make it, you know, accessible to the world we have a, we have a demo server as with RDA you can you can um, publish things try things out on our demo server um, vocabulary widget that's the main focus of this talk um, how do you find out about what is widgetable well you can use the browse facility on the search facility in RBA and you will find that your browse or search results have, have this little icon that says widgetable that points you at the vocabularies that might be suitable for you to use. Uh, there's an example search there. So all of these links you'll find in the presentation and you'll be able to download that after the, um, after the session. And try these links out or, or indeed try your own searches. Uh, we do embed the widget in every view page uh, of every widgetable vocabulary. So again, another example that you can try it later, that is our own version of RIFCS. Uh, in RVA, and you'll see an example. I've got a screenshot on the next on the next slide as well. Uh, we have a widget explorer, uh, which is a wizard that will generate uh, both boilerplate and some, um, or provide you with the boilerplate that you need, and generate some customised code that you can use to get started with the widget. And of course, we have documentation, uh, and there's a link to the documentation pages as well there. The documentation will help you to get started. Uh, with other modes of the widget uh, that are not readily accessible through the Widget Explorer uh, and help you to do further customizations. So the widget, um, it's a selection widget. It's four vocabularies that are published in RBA. Uh, there is JavaScript, a little JavaScript page that you link to, and CSS and CSS. The CSS is particularly basic and feel free to do all sorts of fancy things with that, or just not use it. Use your own CSS if you prefer. The library is implemented using, also using jQuery, um, although it, we, uh, we've heard from some of our users that they don't like jQuery. I can't understand why, but apparently some people don't. And sorry about that, but that seems to be a showstopper for some people. Uh, so you embed links to uh, the JavaScript and the CSS uh, in your page, and um, then you add a little bit of an extra little bit of JavaScript to invoke the widget and you select the vocabulary you want to use and the widget mode that you want to use. So what I've got here is a screenshot from a view page uh, that shows an example of the widget. And so if you do, if you do come across a vocabulary that you like and you want, you say, aha, I want to use that in my page, you'll see already um, a button that you can press to get a sample code fragment to copy paste into your page and a link to the documentation and a link to the boilerplate code that you'll also need. There are some ground rules. Uh, so this only works for vocabularies that we call widgetable, uh, which for now means a vocabulary that has linked data endpoints, linked data API endpoints, which uh, thanks to Simon uh, are in the SysVoc um, family of endpoints. So, uh, concepts and narrower and uh, top concepts. Basically, it means you publish your vocabulary in RBA and you check the checkboxes to import into Sesame and publish through SysVoc. And then um, your vocabulary, we will, we will call that widgetable for you. Um, however, you might think 
that uh, just because it's widgetable that it's going to work well in the widget and that's not the case, um, you might be disappointed in some cases. Uh, not all widgetable vocabularies will work in the widget uh, and even if they do, uh, they might only work in certain of the modes. Basic rule is it has to be SCOS. Um, the SysFoc endpoints are SCOS specific and we use them. Um, so we, we can't magically determine that you have a hierarchy from some other properties that you've invented. Um, if it's SCOS, uh, it will work well in tree mode, basically. If you've, if you've used the uh, appropriate uh, properties to describe the hierarchy and you define some top concepts. So uh, indeed SCOS, and then you'll be able to use it in search mode at least. And for tree mode, you need a hierarchy to be defined and you need the top concepts explicitly to be defined. So the widget works in a number of modes. Here's the list, uh, listed in increasing order of length of name. And that's a coincidence. Uh, there are four prepackaged modes. Uh, and although they are prepackaged, they should fulfill quite a variety of, of needs. Um, you do have the opportunity to customize the behavior uh, quite a lot, uh, even in the, in the prepackaged modes. But there is an advanced mode. And you can use that advanced mode to customize much, much more of the behavior. You, um, with advanced mode, you don't see anything to start with. You have to, you have to select what you, you have to describe with some JavaScript code what you want to happen quite, you know, uh, it's up to you. So you won't get a tree, you won't get a search box, etc. cetera. Um, if you go into advanced mode, you have to do all that yourself, but the widget gives you the infrastructure to drive whatever you decide to, to come up with. So I've got some screenshots of the various modes. Here's an example from um, ABS Fields Research Vocabulary, displayed in tree mode. Um, this tree mode obviously is for vocabularies in which the concepts are arranged in a hierarchy. Uh, we do require that uh, for this to work, that you have explicitly used the SCOS properties, has top concept and narrower uh, to define the hierarchy, and then this will work nicely for you. Uh, search mode. Uh, this is where you don't necessarily have a hierarchy or you don't want to offer the hierarchy because it's too big and, and, and cumbersome to work, to work your way through. Um, His FOR displayed in search mode. Uh, you typically have a, a, a text field and that text field, you type, start typing in some letters and, and then you get a uh, display of the matches. Uh, and then you click the one that you put, is the one that you want. The display here shows the full set of options for what you can see in the list of suggestions here. So there's the, the label, um, the IRI underneath and to the right, uh, the notation. There is one for this vocabulary. We've also got two other uh, modes that drill down into a part of a vocabulary, the narrow mode and the collection modes. A narrow mode um, where you have a hierarchy and you wish to select, um, uh, you wish only to offer those concepts that are narrower than a specific concept. So again, you have to use the SCOS narrower property uh, in your vocabulary to specify that. Uh, the, the narrow mode works either with a drop down. Here's an example of a drop down, um, but you can also specify a text field and that text field has auto completion. So that's, that's for when the, the concepts are arranged in a hierarchy. If you're using SCOS collections, then you can use collection mode. And again, collection mode works either with um, a drop down, so a select element or with a, a text field. And again, you have auto completion, or if you have no idea, you click within the text box and you press the down arrow and the full list of possibilities will appear. So uh, again, this, this, is, this is from RIVCS. Uh, and so this works with uh, sets of concepts that are arranged in a SCOS collection. Uh, advanced mode. Uh, this is this is really roll your own. So if you don't, if you really don't <laughs> like what's what we're offering in these uh, canned modes, if you like, and it's just not going to work for you, you can roll your own. And at this point, you are working with if you like the back end of the widget. The back end provides some services to get the top concepts to be able to do a search to get the narrower concepts, etc. Uh, and then you write some 
you, you, you implicitly invoke those backend functions and then you write some event handlers uh, to deal with what happens when the results come back from those uh, backend functions. Um, the documentation has an example. Uh, that's a bit like narrow mode, but uh, it's got a list of clickable links uh, to each concept's IRI. Uh, I think we use RIFCS for that. We've got a widget explorer, uh, which will uh, help you to get started. So it will give you the boilerplate that you need to incorporate just uh, to, to do anything at all. Um, but it also generates the vocabulary specific code that you need to include. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice step-by-step -step wizard. Um, you will notice some similarities to uh, the keyword aggregator if you use it. Um, I don't know who came first on that, but we seem to have done a very similar sort of thing. Um, the vocabulary we, uh, widget explorer uh, does generate vocabulary specific code, but it only offers it to you in the tree and the search modes. Um, but feel free to use that and then customize the end result. So use, uh, change the look and feel or use one of the other modes. Uh, again, a good place to uh, go further is to check out the documentation that will give you a feel. It's the doc I've spent many, many hours working on the documentation the last few weeks. I think it's, it's good now. Um, it wasn't good before, but it's, it, I think it really does uh, cover what you can do and, and it makes sense a lot more than it used to. Um, so please have a look at that. Uh, and feel free to try out the Widget Explorer, um, try the narrow collection modes, and if you're uh, game try the core mode. Um, the documentation page does have a live demo of each of the modes uh, that you can try, and each one of those is linked to the full source code of those demos. Um, so you can copy and paste, feel free to uh, adapt those to your own needs. So uh, please try it out and let us know what you think. If you like it, um, please go ahead and use it. And if you do use it, please apply for an API key um, that you use uh, in Chrome in the calls to the widget that helps us to track who's using the widget uh, and helps us with our analytics. That's optional, but we, uh, we do ask that you, you do that if you adapt it and use, adapt the widget and use it in your page. And that is it.